So much drama on Capitol Hill the past two days with a once in a century fight as Kevin McCarthy of California scrounges for votes to become the next Speaker of the House. Yeah, and it's not working, at least so far. Six votes have been held over since yesterday. And, and the anti-McCarthy faction seems to not be budging at all. And the voting might not even be done for the day. Chris Wynn is live in Washington with the very latest on all that drama. Chris. Yeah, Myra and Steve, good evening. It has been a wild day here on Capitol Hill. As you said, Kevin McCarthy has now lost six votes in a row amid a rebellion by far right members of the GOP. And as all of this plays out for the world to see, the United States is currently functioning or currently without a functioning House of Representatives. On Capitol Hill, a party divided. I nominate Kevin McCarthy for Speaker of the House. Republican Representative Kevin McCarthy of California entering Congress Wednesday, still fighting for the speakership. I need to get more votes, sir. The 118th Congress began Tuesday with infighting out in the open. McCarthy unable to clinch the speaker's gavel after the first three rounds of voting. A speaker has not been elected. Blocked by GOP hardliners. They love gridlock, they love chaos, and that's what we see going on here. President Joe Biden trying to stay out of the mess, but offering this perspective. It's not a good look, it's not a good thing. It's the United States of America. And I hope they get their act together. It's been a century since the last time a House Speaker election took multiple votes when Republican Frederick Gillette of Massachusetts was elected after nine ballots. This time around, some say the power struggle is about decentralizing the Speaker's office. You're going to see a messy two years in Washington because everybody's going to get a say so in a way that they haven't. Former President Donald Trump coming to McCarthy's defense on social media just hours before the House reconvened, saying in part, Republicans do not turn a great triumph into a giant and embarrassing defeat. The former president even calling some of those GOP holdouts last night, urging them to consider backing Kevin McCarthy. But so far, they continue to stand their ground for now. The House reconvenes in less than 30 minutes. For now, reporting live from our nation's capital, I'm Chris Wynn, KSAT 12 News. Back to you. Well, Chris, as this deadlock continues, where does Kevin McCarthy go from here? Well, Myra, uh, McCarthy faces a very uncertain path. He currently has around 20 defectors. Now, coming into, this after, coming into the afternoon, some of his allies were worried that he would actually lose more Republican support. That has yet to happen. McCarthy says he's in it to win it. How he gets there is anyone's guess. It could even come down to him asking for Democratic support. Myra. Chris Wynn live from Washington for us this evening. Thank you so much. In other news around America tonight, the November jobs report better than expected. New data from the Labor Department shows there were 10 and a half million job openings. About half a million more than forecast. The November number is slightly lower than the upwardly revised number of job openings for October of 10.51 million. The Labor Department will release the much anticipated December jobs report coming up on Friday. And as we start the new year, a lot of health experts will believe new coronavirus variant will be watching new coronavirus variants. They think they're going to be increasing and it's important to slow the spread of COVID-19 into the new year. As Omicron subvariants continue to circulate around the world, many are turning their attention to a surge in cases in China. In the U.S., Omicron subvariants are still the cause of almost all COVID-19 infections. And while Omicron spreads easily, CDC data shows it causes less severe illness and death in general than earlier variants. I hope it continues in that direction. But there's no guarantee. The latest Omicron subvariant now accounts for more than 40% of U.S. COVID-19 cases. Offshoots continue to spread globally as well, especially in China. After that country lifted the bulk of its COVID restrictions, the surge there has prompted the U.S. to require a negative COVID test for all travelers from China beginning January 5th. The Chinese government is not sharing the genetic information about these viruses with the rest of the world. That's why some health experts say this travel requirement is important as new variants are likely to emerge in the future. Perhaps, worst case scenario, a variant that could evade the protection of our current vaccines and therapeutics. 
Others believe the U.S. testing requirements for travelers won't prevent new COVID-19 cases from coming to the U.S. or new variants from emerging, but it may buy the U.S. some time. It's something that we can do to help protect the citizens of the United States. And while COVID-19 levels remain far below those of prior surges, trends are on the rise in parts of the U.S. And there's growing concern that case numbers could soar now that we've passed the winter holidays. Well, Twitter is no stranger to lawsuits, but the latest doesn't have much to do with the social media side itself. What one company says Twitter has failed to do since Elon Musk took over still to come. Plus, how a local group changing something no one would want to eat and using aquaponics to fight food shortages. We'll explain how this all comes together next. Using something called aquaponics to fight food insecurity. A local nonprofit says aquaponics is a system that could help solve the food shortage problem naturally. As Tiffany Huertas reports, the process takes something sort of gross, turns it into something delicious, and how schools are actually getting involved. This is our aquaponics system. Charles Blank is in charge of this project at Gardopia Gardens. This can change a household um, by making them, you know, food secure. Blank says the aquaponics system works using fish, plants, and bacteria. And what happens with this beneficial bacteria is it actually turns the fish waste, fish poop, into plant food. So it takes it from ammonia to a uptakeable form of nitrogen for the plants, and it's gravity fed into these tanks. The plants take out that nitrogen so it doesn't harm the fish, and then this pump sends it back to our fish tank, and it's just recirculating the entire time. This project was created over a year ago, and it has already provided the community with food. And these crops are grown entirely off of fish waste, closed loop system, 100% sustainable, no outputs, no byproducts, and the best lettuce you'll ever taste. The nonprofit will be building these aquaponic systems at local schools and showcasing them at a major event this year. We are ecstatic about doing it at Young Women's Leadership Academy. Island Park and the rodeo. These systems uh, may look complicated, but once you set them up and get the basic pH testing down, you're ready to roll and you can go vertical. You don't need a lot of land for this. Tiffany Huertas, Case at 12 News. First I've ever heard of aquaponics, but now I know. Now you can ponder. Aquaponics. aquaponics. Yeah. All right. 67 degrees out there. And yes, Adam, we need some rain. I do agree on that. I know, but these days are beautiful and they're they very are. motivating. It's hard to right? Motivating to get outside. But then I look around and I'm reminded we need some rain. There's one opportunity in the days ahead, and that's as we get into the weekend. Right now we're at 70. Temperature quickly falling, though. By 9 o'clock, we're down to 56. Midnight, we're at 52. And then look at that. Early tomorrow morning. 43 degrees, but layer up tomorrow. We'll talk about the big temperature spread and even some dampness that's headed our way in just a bit. Well, here's something that Twitter can add to its troubles. The company being sued by a California landlord for breach of contract. According to the complaint, Twitter failed to pay rent on one of the tech company's San Francisco offices. Yeah, Columbia Property Trust asking the court to force Twitter to pay the unpaid rent of $136,000 plus interest and attorney fees. New Twitter owner Elon Musk reportedly stopped paying for Twitter office space to try and cut costs. Neither Twitter nor Columbia Property Trust have commented on the lawsuit. Well, the jackpot and the buzz will keep building for the drawing in the mega millions. No winner last night, so that means Friday's jackpot will be almost $1 billion. According to lottery officials, the top prize is creeping past $940 million. Yeah, with an expected increase in ticket sales, it will likely cross that billion-dollar threshold. There have been only three bigger jackpots since the game began in 2002. The largest single ticket Mega Millions jackpot sold in South Carolina in 2018. That one was worth just more than $1.5 billion. 
I've heard a couple people around the newsroom say, if I win, here, here's what I'm going to do. I'm guessing those, we won't see them those if are, they do win. Yeah, those are always great discussions. <laughs> Keep dreaming. Keep yeah. dreaming. Just hey, being some, realistic. Somebody's got to win eventually. My mom's been saying that for how many years now? <laughs> Still haven't won. Odds are against it. Better odds of a little bit of rain this upcoming weekend uh, than winning the lottery, of course. Some cool mornings, but warm afternoons. Damp and drizzly on Saturday. Just one of those nuisance moisture situations where it makes everything wet and damp and uh, the ground is wet and a little slick in spots, but nothing to show for it. And then real rain chances as we get into Saturday night. Here's a look at those rain chances. Actual light sprinkles and showers at about 20% Saturday morning. And then by Saturday night, we're up to 40%. So some scattered activity, but I right now it's looking like that's mainly going to be east of I-35 with a little bit of a shot even here locally. You look at the January precipitation outlook. Unfortunately, here in Texas, we're in this brown area, which favors below average rainfall, especially around the Big Bend area. That includes us in the there's one chance in the forecast here over the next seven days. That's it. You look at the activity still up in the Northland. You got the snow falling East Coast, New England wound up system, but the most wound up system here, this big classic comma shape. That's the low pressure system that's slamming into the West Coast of the US right now, bringing with it heavy flooding rainfall and high ele higher elevation snow as a result as well. That system's going to fall apart a little bit, move eastward, and as it does so, a little bit of it's going to break off and uh, start to influence our weather a bit. That's this weekend. Between now and then, we've got this little bump in the upper level flow, see those lines bump upward. That's the ridge and that's going to keep us sunny the next few days. Then we get a weak cold front forming from that energy and the chance of a few showers as we get into Saturday night, early Sunday. Here's the future cast fast forwarding to Saturday morning. Gray, cloudy, damp, drizzly, that nuisance moisture, reducing visibility out there. Maybe a peak or two of sun in the afternoon and then the rain chances as the wheat cold front drops in increase by Saturday night, 40% scattered, but that's especially along and east of I-35 with the more significant or more meaningful accumulations along the Gulf Coastline. The closer you are to the Rio Grande, the less your rain chances are as we get into the weekend. Let's talk temperature 70 right now, but a dry dew point of 25. So that gives us a relative humidity of only 18%. So the air is holding 18% of the moisture that it can at our current temperature. It's dry out there. Bulverde 63, Divine 73, 59 already in Kerrville. Meanwhile, 67 in Gonzales. Tomorrow morning, we're going to start the day in the low 40s. So you feel a bit of a chill in the air for early risers. 40 Bulverde Canyon Lake, even 35 Comfort, Kerrville area, Bandera 39 degrees. But by the afternoon, we warm up significantly. 43 at 7 a.m. By noon, we're at 70. So you won't need the sweatshirt for very long in the morning tomorrow. And then by the afternoon, we're at 76 for the high temperature. That's in San Antonio, obviously a few degrees warmer to the south. Pleasanton about 78, the high Floresville, Nixon about 77. One little chance of rain. There it is Saturday night in the seven day forecast. Otherwise, despite a little bit of fog Friday morning and significant dampness, drizzle and fog Saturday morning, we've just got more of the same, which is comfortable and pleasant and what I like to call motivating weather motivates you to get outside and maybe do a little exercise, get moving a bit. <laughs> Mornings in the 40s and afternoons in the 70s will generally be the rule, especially next week. You were motivated to do a little dancing there. I was. Couldn't see it on cam. Mm -mm, we missed it. Yeah. In case you missed it, <laughs> not his dancing, not but that. other things today. We've got that coming up next. <laughs> You'll see the dancing at some point. Yeah. Here's today's I See Why Am I. It is Wednesday. It is January 4th. Today, Michelle Barrientos Vela learned the punishment for her crimes. Barrientos Vela, whose public corruption indictment came three years ago this month, was facing the possibility of a decade in prison. Instead, she'll serve five years probation, complete 600 hours of community service, and serve 90 days in jail. That jail sentence suspended while Barrientos Vela appeals her convictions. Judge Mesa told the ex-constable she had no respect 
respect for the law while in uniform, but pointed out that she is loved and respected by her family. It was that same family, specifically two of Barrientes Vela's sons, who exploded in anger as the sentence was read. There's a 25 A man is in the hospital after he was shot outside of a bar last night. This happened outside the Mustang Sally's on Roosevelt around 2 a.m. An employee told our crew the shooting was caught on security video, which has now been turned over to San Antonio police. He claims the victim was walking to his car when the suspect took his watch and fired shots while running away. At last check, that victim was in critical condition. Starbucks has launched its winter menu and has a new offering. It's the pistachio cream cold brew. The drink features cold brew with vanilla syrup topped with pistachio cream, cold foam, and salted brown buttery sprinkles. The new item joins a returning seasonal fan favorite, the pistachio latte, which was first introduced in 2021. The winter menu also includes the return of the red velvet loaf to the bakery case. show you what's happening on the trans guide camera here at I 10 and medical. These are the eastbound lanes we're looking at with the flashing lights and the flares there. There was an accident just beyond that sign from this view, but you can see two lanes are shut down right now. Traffic pretty slow going as it's headed into downtown here at I 10 and medical. Adam. All right, temperatures cooling quickly this evening and tomorrow morning 43 degrees, but notice how quickly the temperature climbs. I mean, by 10 a.m. we're up to 62, so you'll feel that chill briefly in the morning. Then that sun and dry air goes a long way to warm us up efficiently. Friday morning at 50, some patchy fog. 70s in the afternoons, really the next seven days. And a lot of dampness Saturday morning with the humidity and drizzle and a few scattered showers by Saturday night. Thanks for watching the news at six. See you back here on the night beat at 10.